Hey guys, it's Lisa from ToCreateWebsite.com, and today I'm here to clear up some misconceptions about thesis, the thesis WordPress theme. There have been a lot of people buying this theme. There's a lot of buzz about this theme in the blogosphere. It's really, really a great theme, but there are a lot of people buying it thinking that all they have to do is drag and drop a few things and then they can have a customized blog like mine. And since I've updated my blog, I've been getting so many questions about how much of my customizations were just the thesis admin panel versus me doing my own custom CSS code. So that's what I want to go through in my video. So I'm going to just basically walk you through my blog step by step and tell you how much of it was thesis, how much of it was me doing my own custom work. So that'll give you an idea of, you know, whether or not thesis is for you. So before I do that, I just want to show when you first buy thesis, this is what your blog is going to look like. Now, a lot of you are saying, oh, my goodness, it is so plain, it is so boring. But that's actually a good thing because it allows you to do whatever you want to do. It's like a blank palette. If you want to leave it like this, that's fine. If you want to customize it more, like I've done, that's fine as well, but you're going to have to learn a little bit about CSS. And so that's the point of this video. So let me take you through my blog. You've got my header up here. These nav links, not my header, these, the nav links above the header. All of this is part of thesis. So I didn't have to create the nav buttons. It comes with the theme. So if you go to the default, it's the same thing up here. And you can even do drop down menus and you can do that in the control panel without having to get into the code. I just don't have drop downs because I chose not to do it. But you can do that very easily by going into your WordPress control panel. And when you install thesis, you'll get this thesis tab over here and you click design options. And you're just going to click nav menu. And as you can see, here are my colors from my nav bar. Now, if you want to change the height of these buttons or the look of these buttons in some way, then that's when you're going to have to get into your style sheet and change some CSS code around. That's when it starts getting into, okay, no, you need to know CSS. If you don't want to learn CSS, then you are going to be limited to what you can do in this design area. Now, there are a lot of things that you can do here. You can change the number of columns of your blog, you can change the width of your main content area and your sidebars. You can add teasers to your blog, and I'll talk about that in a minute. You can control the font and the colors, but if you want to start doing very customized designs, that's when CSS is going to have to come in. Now, speaking of customized design, let's talk about my header. My header is pretty much all CSS. I did not do my header by coming into the design options and pasting some code or dragging and dropping something here to make my header show up. This is when I had to learn CSS. Well, I already had sort of a, a background with CSS prior to buying Thesis, which helped, but using Thesis actually has helped me hone my CSS skills, if you will. So let's just say, for example, these social media icons that are on the top of my header. A lot of people ask me how I did that. With CSS or thesis, what, I mean, this, this law really applies to CSS in general. When you are doing CSS, the idea is to use your CSS, which is your style sheet, to tell the browser, this is where I want this block to be positioned, and the, here's the margin, here's the padding, and here's the location. So the first thing I did is I went into my style sheet, which is the custom file editor in Thesis. And I created this four line code here, right here. This code right here basically says, I want these icons to be displayed in the top right of my header. Okay, that's what it says. And then I opened up the output file, which is the custom functions file in Thesis to actually paste the HTML code for the icons. And that's how the CSS works, even if you have just a static website. It's about declaring the style in your style sheet and then pasting the actual code itself in the output file. So this code here, all it is is just HTML for these icons. 
So I used my style sheet to say, okay, I wanted to show up on the right side of my header. And then I pasted the actual code into the output file. And for thesis, that is the custom functions file. And the great thing about thesis is once you understand how it works, it's great because you really only have to update two files, your style sheet. That's where you declare all your styles. And then your custom functions file is where you put the actual code for everything to go. So unlike a free theme where you have your header at PHP, you have your sidebar at PHP, you might have your sidebar to PHP and you're looking at your blog and you're like, well, I want to put something down here. What file am I supposed to edit with thesis? It's really only two files. It's just understanding how to edit those files. And I actually learned a lot about customizing thesis using their forms. When I first bought it, I have to admit, I was a little overwhelmed. I was like, wow, okay, how do I change my header? But their forms have a lot of stickies, which are basically just posts that's, that are stuck at the top of the, the forms that um, give you help and advice for common updates, like how to change the header, how do I change my background, and those kinds of things. So the great thing about Thesis is you got two files to edit your entire blog, your custom functions and your custom.css file. Now, how advanced you want to get with your blog, that's just going to determine, um, that's just going to depend on how much CSS you really learn or you want to learn. If you don't want to learn a lot about CSS, then fine. Then your blog will look more like the standard default blog. And for some people, that's fine. But if you want to get really customized, that's when it's about understanding CSS. Same thing with my background. My background, first of all, I created the background in Photoshop. And I have a video on my other channel uh, to create a website that shows you how I did that. And I simply opened up my style sheet because your background is a common area of your site, meaning every page uses the background so that you have to go to your style sheet. And I just pasted this code here. Oh, sorry, you can't see it. <laughs> I just pasted this code here. That's what brings up the background. And I got this code from the forms, the thesis forms. That's how I learned how to do it. I had to learn to be very resource resourceful with having the thesis theme because it doesn't really operate like a lot of themes. But once you get it and you understand it, you're like, wow, this is so cool. You mean I only have to update these two files to change my entire blog? It's amazing. So let's go down to my content. This is my homepage. How did I get my posts to show up like, like a magazine style with the two columns and then the read the full article? That's a part of the thesis theme. I didn't have to get into any code for that. All I did was I went into the design options. You're going to spend a lot of time in the design options panel. And there is a section called teasers. And you can customize how your teasers look. You can decide if you want the title to display, the author name, the date. So that customizes how each teaser looks. Now, in order to customize how many posts you want to show, you simply just go to your WordPress settings area like, that everybody has and you say how many posts you want to show on your homepage. And then you use the thesis design options to customize it further in your teasers area. So that area, this section here is just all thesis. Okay. So that's really all I did to customize my blog. Oh, I didn't talk about the feature box. Sorry. Right below my header, you see this red box with my categories listed across the page. This is a combination of the thesis feature and me using a little bit of CSS. For example, this feature box, to turn this on, all you do is you go to your design options and you click feature box and you can decide if you want to use it at all and where you want to place it. So me, I have it in the full width above my content and I have it site wide, meaning it shows up on every page. So this red bar here is showing up on every page. Now, how did I make it red? How did I get my categories to show up there? That's when CSS comes into play. Now, if I had not known any CSS, sure, I can use this feature box, but maybe I'll just paste some AdSense code or something in there and have some AdSense ads appear here. Or maybe I'll just put some simple HTML for the banner. 
and um, a banner can show up here. Depending on how customized you want to get, that's going to determine how much CSS you need to know. I cannot emphasize that enough. Now, one more thing before I go, I want to talk about the Open Hook plugin. This will make your life a little easier if you don't want to have to deal with the custom functions file and all that. There is a plugin called Thesis Open Hook that is free and it allows you to add content, custom content or links or images, whatever, to parts of your blog without having to open up the style sheet or the functions page. So let's say you want to add some, some text after your comments. So you're going to come to the plugin and you're going to look for something that says thesis hook after comments. There it is. And so you see you've got this comment field and you just type blah, 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 blah. And if I were to hit save, then this text would appear after my comment area. If I wanted to add something to my comment field. I could put text here and this will show up on my comment field. Same thing goes for if I want to customize my 404 page, which I've already done. Rather than having to manually update the files and uploading them with an FTP program, this plugin allows me to change my 404 page right here. So if somebody goes to a wrong page on my blog like this, oops, looks like you've got a bad link. That's exactly what I put. Oh, sorry, here, here. Oops, looks like you've got a bad link. So I customized my 404 title and content right through the plugin. So if you don't wanna deal with the custom functions file or whatever, and uh, you want a, an easier way of updating sections of your blog, you can install this free plugin and it'll help you customize various sections of thesis, okay? So guys, I really hope this has been helpful to you. I really hope this helps clear up a lot of misconceptions about thesis. I think a lot of people think that you don't have to know CSS at all. I mean, true, you don't, but if you don't want to learn CSS, then your blog's probably going to look a lot like this with maybe a few customizations, like you can change the colors of your menu, you can change your font color, your text. But if you want to do some things that I've done, you're going to have to get into the CSS, and I highly recommend you spend some time in the forums. I spent about 30 to 45 minutes there when I first bought Thesis, and it helped me greatly. Once you understand how Thesis is driven and you understand their hook feature, the possibilities are endless. So hope you've enjoyed this. I know it's a little long. Sorry about that, but I wanted to get a lot in. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.